George Simmel, philosopher, cultural theorist, and one of the first German sociologists. George Simmel was born in Berlin in a rich family of German Jews who came from Wrocław. He was the youngest of seven kids of his parents. His mother was Catholic, his father was Protestantism, but they chose that George would be in Protestantism religion. His father, Edward Simmel, who was a respected merchant, founder and partner of the still living in Berlin chocolate factory, named Felix und Sarotti, suddenly died in 1874. The family then entrusted the legal and material protection of George Simmel to his uncle, Julius Friedlander, a founder and owner of an international music publishing house. Friedlander died in 1889, leaving his fortune to George Simmel. The financial stability that Simmel gained in this way helped him on his long journey to a position of university professor. Simmel was interested in many things, for example, sociology, philosophy, history, art, music, ethics, religion, literature, and culture theory. Because of this, it was hard for him to focus on one thing. In his life, he wrote over 29 books, but only part was devoted to his sociology. He realized that reality is extremely complicated and no matter what theory he comes up with, it will only be one of many. According to him, society has two definitions. The first one, people as a society are shaped by their history. And the second one, people create a society on the basics of their relationships between each other. He believed that human relationships are endless collapsing and in uh, uh, rebuilding cycle. Simmel developed a concept of sociology initiated by Ferdinand Tonis. However, he did not create any separate social system and he did not propose his own scientific method. Uh, Simmel considered by, uh, the proper subject of sociology interest to be permanent form of interpersonal relations, studies regardless of the historical and psychological context in uh, which they occur. The notion of society understood as a really existing supra-individual whole was opposed by the process of socialization, the study of which would be investigated by sociology. In particular, sociologists, according to him, were to focus on the study of inter interactions and their forms because society, as the result uh, of international process, however, all through society is a creation of interacting individuals, it also appears to individuals as being external to them and uh, exerting pressure on them. Simmel was one of the, one of the founders of microsociology. Currently, he is also considered um, as one of the precursors of, the, of uh, sociology of everyday life. And there are four basic levels of concern in the similar uh, work. The first one, the psychological wor uh, working of social life. The next one, the psychological working of interpersonal relations. And the next one, the structure of uh, any changes in the kids. Mm, that's uh, the social and cultural spirit of his time. He would also adopt the principle of emergentism, the idea that higher levels of concrete properties emerge from lower levels. And the last one, the nature uh, and inevitable facts of humanity. And his view of uh, on metropolis. People living in the cities are more susceptible to mental illness than their countryside friends. George Simmer suggests that uh, this is because the city is a place of excessive stimulation, has a spe special way of rendering people indifference uh, to the world around them. When uh, where relations uh, in town are characterized by emotions, these in the cities are purely economic and its inhabitants uh, are purer for it. His view on money, and it's in, in his work, Philosophy of Money, similar view money as components of life, which helped us understand the totality of life. Simmel believed uh, that people created value by making objects 
then separating themselves from that object and then trying to overcome that distance. He would that think which were too close, were not considered valuable, and things which uh, were too far for people to get were also not considered valuable. Considered and determined value was the scarcity, time, sacrifice, and difficulties involved in getting the object. For Simmel, city life led to a division of labor and increased financial situation. As financial transactions increase, some emphasis shifts to what the individual can do instead of who the individual is financial matters in condition to uh, emotions are in play. In his uh, multi-layered essay, Women's Sexuality and Love, published in 1923, Samuel discussed flirtation as a general type of social interactions. According to Simmel, to define flirtation as simply a passion for, a passion for uh, pleasing is to confuse the means to an end with the desire for this end. The destructiveness of the flirt lies in the fact that she awakes daylight and desire means of a unique entrance and synthesizing through uh, the alternation of accommodation and denial. In the behavior of the field, the man feels the proximity and impenetration of the ability and inability to acquire something. This is essence of the prize. A sidelong glance with the head half turn is characteristic of frustration uh, in the most banal grace. Uh, in the eyes of Simmel, fashion is a form of social relationships that allows these who wish to confirm to the demand of the group to do so. It also allows some to be individualistic by deviating from the norm. There are many social laws in the fashions, and both objective culture and individual culture can have an influence on people. In the initial stage, everyone adopts what is fashionable, and those who deviate from the fashion inevitably adopt a whole new view on what they consider fashion. Samuel argued that not only does following what is in fashion involve dualities, so does the effort on the part of some people to be a fashion. And fashionable people view these who follow a fashion as being imitators and themselves as maverick but Simmel argued that the latter are simply engaging in the inverse form of imitation. This means that uh, these who are trying to be different are, or unique are not, because in trying to be different, they become a part of the new group that has labeled themselves different or unique. According to Simmel, philosophy should not deal with the outside world, but express the inner world. Uh, Simmel combined Kant ideas with the do uh, dominant 19th century positivism. In his opinion, a uh, personal view of the world is coordinated both biologically, especially due to, uh, to the structure of the sensory organs, and socially. Both logical laws and moral principles are of such origin. Contrary to Kant, he regards cognition and relative cognition by history. Intellectual influences Max Weber. Simmel and Max Weber were very close friends and unequal peers. Also, Simmel disagreed with uh, Weber's search for historical particulars uh, instead, and instead of focus on intravent laws of social life. Karl Marx is not an oppressive commodity, uh, as Marx uh, coined it, but uh, it's instead a, a generalized medium of social exchange with increased social interactions. Um, the last uh, moments of his life, he said these words. He stopped reading uh, newspapers in the heat of the Black Forest and finished writing the book. He died on the September uh, 1918 in Strasbourg, shortly before the end of the First War, uh, of liver cancer. 
and before his death he wrote a farewell letter to his friends with words, I'm living with the awareness that my life measured with an average measure has reached its culmination and a good end. I go without offense to my fate and without the pain of parting, knowing that this is good and the right moment has come. And here you can see the, the memory board uh, in the home where he lived. Mm, and similar major monographic works include in chronological uh, order. Marianne Weber. So, Marianne Weber was born in Germany in 1870. She was the daughter of a country doctor and received primary education at home at a village school. When she turned 16, she was sent to be educated and at 21, she was invited to stay in Berlin with distant relatives and this is how she met Max. She spent a lot of time with Max's family um, and Max's mother in particular, who influenced her later work on domestic relations. Max and Marianne Weber eventually got married and lived in Berlin together. During the early marriage, Max Weber taught in Berlin where Marianne would sit and listen in on his lectures. She would acquaint herself with his colleagues and studied with a philosopher called Heinrich Rickert. Around this time, she developed an interest in the women's movement, co-founding a society that advocated feminist thoughts. She fought hard to raise the number of women students in universities. Max was very supportive of this work and defended her in many scenarios. When Max suffered a mental breakdown in 1898, he withdrew from society and Marianne took his place at public speaking events and political meetings, as well as producing her first book. During her travels to America in 1904, Marianne met Jane Addams and Florence Kelly, which were both feminists and political reformers. Three years after her travels, she published one of her most famous works, Wife and Mother in the Development of Law. She then published more work. In 1918, Marianne became a member of the German Democratic Party and was the first woman to be elected as a delegate. One year later, she got the role of chairwoman. In 1920, when Max died suddenly, she, this resulted in her taking a step back from her own work and devoting her time on getting her husband's 10 volumes ready for publication, as well as producing a biography for her husband. This provided her with more insight into her own research. She then went on to receive an honorary doctoral degree. In 1935, however, Adolf Hitler dissolved the League of German Women's Associations, which put a halt on her work as a feminist speaker. She continued to silently do her work and still published. Marianne Weber focused on rediscovering the social world and its construction through the perspective of women. She believed that capitalism and patriarchy were separate and that harmful practices of patriarchy could be extinguished, but capitalism would continue to function without them. From knowledge of Helen's unhappy marriage, she wrote about the tension between sexes and marriage. From traditional values, women were not able to project their ideas, only being able to express themselves at home and not completely because of overbearing partners. Weber attests an authority and autonomy in marriage within the religious communities of the New World that was sustained by the Puritan spirit, the idea that religious equality of women first came to be taken seriously. She described the basic necessities of men and women within marriage being intimacy, expression and resources as being the same for both sexes. However, through the course of history, women were designated to the role of provider of these three resources, while men were expected to have those needs fulfilled by their wives. 
She argued that women were degraded into marriage because they had no way of attaining their own funds until the Industrial Revolution. So marriage was the way for bargaining for money in order to be able to take care of themselves. Weber was also interested in women's lives in pursuit of education. She studied generation-based differences between women's attitude towards education as time went on and it became more accessible and normalised. She noticed at first that women had to abandon feminine traits to fit in at university. The next generation was less inclined to make these sacrifices and they did not have to, but they were treated as second-rate students. And the third generation could afford to dismiss their place at university and were just as concerned with their prospect of marriage as they were with their education. Weber recognises that this mindset is the product of the long-held belief that women understands herself and is understood by men and by the society as being destined for marriage. She also looked into the strug struggles of women from different class education systems and locations and how it impacted their lives. Marianne Weber disagreed a lot with other sociologists, such as Simmel and even her own husband. She admired Simmel's work and ideas, but she argued that some of Simmel's ideas were differed from other philosophers that viewed men as bearers of humanity and women as just the second sex. However, despite this, she still disagrees with his view on women. She states that some women would agree with his views on femininity. However, some women don't like to be confined to intuition and care and would like to participate in objective cultures as other men do. Marianne accepts the existence of differences between men and women. However, she prefers to state what men and women have in common. In terms of objective culture, Marianne disagrees with Simmel's ideas. He stated that in the world of art, women are not capable of becoming artistic geniuses because they have no need for the pursuit of grand ideas and believe they would be better suited to performative arts because of their intuitive and communicative capacities. He also believed that this applied to sciences. Marianne, of course, disagrees with this and welcomed the idea of diminishing household tasks as that leaves enough time for women to contribute to objective culture. In her opinion, women are just as capable as men to come up with big ideas in those fields of work, just as men did. However, as long as women have to take care of the house, they will lack the time to do so.